Hi, Thomas. Hi. Hi. Good to have you here in Italy. Um, so, uh, I have a question for you. Um, there's still a lot of debate on whether leadership is an innate characteristic or can be learned. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, my take is that, you know, first of all, people like simple and categorical answers to things. So, you know, when people ask about the cause of leadership, usually we expect them uh, to say that it's either nature or nurture. Um, if you look at research or academic psychology, the answer to any question is more gray. So it tends to be, it depends, it's a little bit of both. And although that might sound as if I'm trying to sit on the fence here, uh, the reality is that leadership uh, is based on some characteristics that are more innate and some characteristics that uh, can be nurtured or developed more with time. Now, of course, uh, the idea that leadership can be totally innate is just stupid. Would you have a five-week baby running Italy or Apple? No, right? Would you have a five-year-old uh, run uh, a big company or even a small firm? No. Um, so clearly, leadership does develop. At the same time, um, we also know that the probability for uh, some people to develop leadership potential is greater than for others. Okay, so if you take two children even, or two people at the age of five, five years old, you will uh, measure certain qualities and that will help you make um, a fairly uh, robust uh, or statistically sound bet on which of these two individuals will develop more leadership potential or is more likely to be a better leader. For example, there are psychological studies that take uh, babies, infants, you know, weeks old, and you film them and you see how frequently they cry and those who cry more frequently are more likely to be low adjustment later, also more neurotic and more pessimistic and more negative. And at the age of 20 or 30, they are more likely to be single or have relationship problems. By the same token, uh, they're probably going to be less likely to be seen as leader-like because they are um, you know, more pessimistic, more insecure, and not confident enough. And you can do the same with sociability, so babies that um, smile more often and that display more positive effect uh, end up being more confident, more socially, more outgoing, so they're better at networking, they build richer um, uh, social groups, they have more support. Um, and there's another important point here that is that leadership uh, depends largely on personality. So uh, who you are determines your likelihood of becoming a leader. And it also determines how good a leader you will be. And personality is around 40 or 50% heritable. Okay, so uh, you can put the pieces together. And that should help us uh, predict or understand that even before somebody is born, their chances of having potential for leadership are greater than in other people. Okay, so if you have uh, two parents who uh, are more leader-like and they're, because they're smarter, more ambitious, more effective, more interpersonally uh, skilled, and maybe they have better integrity or you know all these qualities, then before you come to this world, you will have greater potential. Of course, is the final element, which is that nature and nurture interact all the time. So having parents, for example, that are uh, more leader-like or have more potential for leadership will increase your probability that you inherit those qualities, but also you will inherit an environment that is more conducive of leadership because they will give you better education, they will, uh, edu they will train you or teach you more, and they will have higher aspirations for you. So what this means is that um, basically at any given point in time and in any place, uh, we can predict with uh, um, some degree of accuracy what your leadership potential is at a very early stage. Of course, the closer you are to adult life and if you have already 
a record, a track record of being a leader. Our prediction will be a lot more accurate. Okay. And people don't need to be scared by this because, you know, I mean, I think the heritability of uh, adult weight is something like 80, 80%. So in your 40s, you have 80% probability that your weight is the same as your same sex parent at that age. Does it mean that you can't be thinner or fatter? No, but most people are going to be the same because there are natural tendencies that drive us to behave in the same way. And the same applies to leadership. So what we need to understand is that although it's very nice to say that anybody can be a great leader, in reality, some people have much higher probability than others. I'd like to ask you about leadership and culture. Do you think there's a relationship between the style of a leader and the culture or the national culture in which he or she operates? Um, yes, and uh, it is again um, a complex relationship. Um, and again, we need to understand that uh, um, leadership behaviors are somewhat culturally context contextual, yeah. Um, but at the same time, they're somewhat universal, okay? Uh, what is contextual is uh, the set of behaviors that contribute to leadership emergence. So are you likely to be seen as a leader that is more culturally contestant, contextual? So for example, um, if you want to be a leader, a political or business leader in Italy, uh, you would probably have to display um, more masculine behaviors, uh, more confidence, more social skills, more charisma than if you want to be the same in Finland. Okay, there's, a, there's an old joke that says that in Finland an extrovert is somebody who looks at your shoes as, oppo as opposed to their own shoes, you know. So extraversion and social skills are not that relevant in Finland, much like confidence, bravado, charm uh, isn't as relevant, uh, maybe even in Germany as it is in Italy. And maybe those same things are more important in Rome and Naples than in Milan, right? So culture is not uh, limited uh, to even one country, but within each country, and Italy is a good example of that because it used to mean many different places and now it is a country with very diverse in its culture. Um, but yes, the factors that make some people seem more leader-like are more contextual. And, and I would say that what's more universal is the attributes that contribute to effective leadership. Um, so whether you're in Finland, Italy, uh, Brazil, Suriname, or a remote uh, island in the South Pacific Ocean, um, if you have better judgment, if you have more expertise, if you have more integrity, uh, if you're more self-aware, and uh, uh, I would argue if you are more modest, you know, as opposed to arrogant, um, you will be able to be a better leader once you get there because you're going to be better at building and maintaining high-performing teams and you're going to be less self-centered and you're going to have what it takes to create a successful team or organization. So the attributes of effective leadership, I would say, are quite universal. And the attributes of ineffective leadership are also quite universal. People who are arrogant, who have bad judgment, who are incompetent, who have no integrity, and who are so self-centered that they don't care about others, systematically make bad leaders, regardless of where they are. Right? So when we look at the profile of leaders who derail or fail, you can see that culture doesn't play a, a very big role. And when we look at the profile of very successful leaders, you can see that culture doesn't play a very big role. At most, these things will be manifested differently with different nuances in different places. Um, and I think that uh, uh, on the whole or uh, in general, you know, the big picture for me is that as leadership experts, anybody who has expertise in this, what we need to do is educate the culture so that they understand what attributes leaders should have and look beyond, you know, cut to the chase and don't be distracted by things that are decoys, you know, deception and stuff like that.